Stephen Hand from Staccata and Hobart. I want to talk today about one of the most important passages in George Silver's work, and that is Paradox 24. And I want to talk about I want to talk about it because it's badly misunderstood by some people who look at it. So let's start off by looking at what Paradox 24 actually says. I never knew any that won the clothes with the dagger upon the sword and buckler, but did wish himself out again. For distance being broken, judgment faileth for lack of time to judge, and the eyes deceived by the swift motion of the hand, and for lack of true space with the dagger hand, which cannot be otherwise, for lack of circumference, to defend both blow and thrust, it is impossible for lack of true space in just time, the agent having gotten the true place, to defend one thrust or blow of an hundred. And it is most certain, whosoever closeth with sword and dagger against the sword and buckler is in great danger to be slain. Likewise, at the point within distance, if he stand to defend both blow and thrust with his dagger, for lack of true space and distance, if he hath the best eye of any man, and could see perfectly which way the thrust or blow cometh, and when it cometh, as it not to be denied, but he may, yet his space being too large, it helpeth him nothing, because one man's hand being as swift as another man's hand, both being within distance, he that striketh or thrusteth, hurteth the water. The reason is this, the agent being in the first motion, although in his offence further to go than the water to defend, yet the water's space being too large, the blow or thrust will be performed home before the warder can come to the true place to defend himself. And although the warder do perfectly see the blow or thrust coming, so shall he see his own ward so far from the true place of his defence, that although he do at that instant time plainly see the blow or thrust coming, it shall be impossible for him to recover the true place of his ward till he, till he is wounded. But let the warder with his dagger say that it is not true which I have said, for as he hath eyes to behold the blow or thrust coming, so hath he as good time to defend himself. Herein he shall find himself deceived too. This is the reason. The hand is the swiftest motion, the foot is the slowest. Without distance, the hand is tied to the motion of the feet, whereby the time of the hand is made as slow as the foot, because thereby we redeem every time lost upon his coming in by the slow motion of the foot, and have thereby and have time thereby to judge when and how he can perform any action whatsoever. And so we have the time of the hand to the time of the feet. Now is the hand in his own course more swifter than the foot or eye. Therefore, within distance the eye is deceived and judgment is lost. And that is another cause that the warder with his dagger, although he hath perfect eyes, is still within distance deceived. For proof that the hand is more swifter than the eye, and thereby deceiveth the eyes, let two stand within distance, and let one of them stand still to defend himself, and let the other flourish and force with his hand, and he shall continually with the swift motions of his hand deceive the eyes of him that standeth watching to defend himself, and, con and shall continually strike him in diverse places with his hand. So Paradox 24 is primarily about talking about the superiority of the buckler as a secondary weapon uh, to the dagger. Now proponents of the alternative theory of um, the alternative interpretation of silver um, have claimed that in Paradox 24 where it says that without distance the speed of the hand is tied to the speed of the foot, but within distance the hand uh, has its freedom and can deceive the eye. Um, but that's talking about two separate attacks. And the great revelation for me that made me really understand Silver's system was realising it's not about two attacks, it's about the same attack. So essentially, what the other side of the argument are saying is that there are two attacks, one from without distance uh, where the speed of the hand is tied to the speed of the foot 
and you can easily see what's coming and you can judge and uh, by definition parry. And there's another attack, uh, the one you should be doing, for it, which starts from within distance and because the hand is not tied to the speed of the foot, um, then the, it's too fast for the eye to, to, for the eye to see and uh, will likely hit. So we've got, in their interpretation, we've got one lot of attacks that's very unlikely to hit and one which is very likely to hit. But that's not what Paradox 24 is saying. It's talking repeatedly about closing distance. It says, distance being broken, judgment faileth. Right, so it's not saying, it's not saying that, that you walk into distance and then there's an attack coming from within distance. It says, as distance is broken, that's when your judgment fails. Um, so it's saying that although you might be able to judge an attack uh, outside of distance, as your opponent closes, uh, that ability to judge is lost because the speed of the hand is no longer tied to the speed of the foot as you come within distance. So if what the alternative interpretation says is correct, then it should be massively easier to defend an attack that's coming from without distance um, there than it would be to defend an attack that's coming, that starts from within distance. So uh, let's examine that and see whether that's actually the case. Oh, Jesus. Oh. Oh. Oh, yeah. Can't be done. Buckle up. Yes. Right, make sure you step this within distance. Yep. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, be a bit gentle, mate. Oh, all right. Sword. Okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Right, let's try coming from outside distance. Oh, Jesus. Oh, yes. Okay, can't do it. All right. Buckler. Oh, yeah, you got that one through. Yeah. Oh, a bit of that's crept through. Sorry, I slipped back. I should have stayed in distance. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes, nice. 
Oh, yeah. Tricky. All right, let's try the saw. You may not have noticed as I counter cut into his arm. Which Nice thrust. Didn't see that one coming. Oh, yeah. Nice undercut. So, as you can see in practice, it's only marginally better against a skilled opponent, which my son Lewis definitely is, uh, it's only marginally better to be at distance. So why is that the case? Now, firstly, I should point out that um, I was standing still to receive the attacks, uh, and that goes against a lot of Silver's advice. Uh, and one of the main benefits that you have when somebody's attacking from outside distance is that um, because they're moving their feet, you've got the chance to move your feet. Right, you've got that extra extra bit of time. So from the examples, I, I didn't manage to parry a single um, uh, a single attack with the dagger in uh, close distance. Uh, I was only a little bit better in wide distance. Um, the buckler, uh, as Silver says, is quite a bit better parrying tool. I've got about um, forty percent parries in um, close distance but only 50% at wide distance. So, you know, better, but not that much better. Again, the sword, as Silver says, is the best parrying tool of all. Um, I got two thirds of the attacks within distance, um, but outside distance, it was only um, high 70%. So we can clearly see from those demonstrations that as slow as the attacking hand is in the early part of the action when you're outside distance, the moment you break distance, and I've been saying this again and again and again and again, and people on the other side tell me it's not possible and don't believe it, but I've demonstrated over and over and over, that although the hand is, uh, is relatively slow, there's no point in it being fast until you start to break distance. If you move in a true time, that is, if you move with the hand um, leading the foot, which is Silver's definition of the true time, whatsoever is done with the hand before the foot is, is true, um, then the moment you break distance, your hand is free to speed up and change direction. This is exactly what Silver meant when he said, distance being broken, judgment faileth. Now, Silver's saying here that there's no point moving your hand quickly until you start to break distance. Um, and that as you break distance, your hand becomes free and your hand gets the ability to change direction and to, um, to speed up, or indeed to slow down if that's tactically what you want to do, and often do that. Uh, but that is only the case if you're attacking in a true time, if you're leading with the hand. If you lead with the foot, 
which silver def is what silver defines as being a false time, what silver is done with the foot or feet before the hand is false. Um, so if you lead with the foot, then your hand's always playing catch up and your hand doesn't have that freedom as you break distance. So using true times allows you to enter distance guarded, as Silver says, um, to be creating a threat as you do so, uh, and once you break distance, to retain that freedom, that freedom to speed up, change direction, and to thereby deceive your deceive the eye of your opponent with the speed of your hand, which is exactly what Silver's saying. This advantage is lost if you do this in two tempi. If you close distance in one tempo and then attack in a second tempo, you've basically given a huge tell to your opponent. Here they come, right? And as we see again and again and again in Corey Winslow's own video, when he advances, or when a fencer advances, they get hit, right? They're not guarding themselves, they're not creating a threat, right? Now, this is precisely why Silver tells you not to do this. Um, the times where he says that you can close are so clearly exceptions to the general rule. So, Paradox 24. What's it actually saying and why is it important? What it's saying is that although the hand has to be slow as you're, uh, as you're advancing from wide distance, there's no point in it being in it moving faster than the foot. The moment that you come within distance, then it's the motion of the hand is not constrained by the motion of the foot. And your hand can speed up and it can change direction. And by doing so, even if you're attacking from wide distance, you can deceive the opponent exactly as if you'd started an attack from within distance. There's no requirement to walk in, gain distance, and then only then start your attack. You can get exactly the same benefit by attacking from outside distance if you do it in a true time, that is, leading with the hand. That's why it's so important. Only then, only once I understood this, did I understand all the passages in Silver where he talks about deceptions. He talks about you know, but if you parry this way, you won't know which side of the sword your opponent will be on. Um, you won't be able to parry gardened um, in, in sufficient time. Well, you've got tons of time if people aren't redirecting their sword and deceiving you. If they're redirecting their sword and deceiving you, you've got, you know, if you make a big movement like, like that, you're giving them tons and tons of time to redirect around that. Whereas if you're making a little movement like that, then you're not. All right? So what Paradox 24 did is it broke open the system. It allowed me to understand the passages where Silver says, don't do this because you'll be deceived. All right? And as such, Paradox 24 is a really, really, really important passage and unfortunately, it's all too easy to misunderstand it. So, Paradox 24 is saying the hand moves slowly at the start of the action, but as you break distance, it can move quickly, it can change direction, and by the, the speed of the hand can deceive the eye of the defender. Thanks for watching.